Hi everyone, Regina here with Starter PPC. Today we're gonna to go through conversions, um, formerly called conversion actions, and often called conversion goals. <laughs> it's all synonymous. Uh, we're gonna talk about that section of Google Ads. Um, there's a couple of really cool settings that allow you to customize it to your needs. And I'm gonna also go into a couple of examples of why you might choose to set it up one way over the other. Um, what we often do internally at, at Starter PPC with clients who have brand new Google Ads accounts versus ad accounts with lots of data, etc. So let's get started. Okay. Um, I'll just put my face down here. So um, to get to the, the conversions area, you're going to want to, well, I, I should just back out of here and show you how I got here. So on the main screen, you just go up to tools and settings. Let me zoom in here. Tools and settings and then conversions. And this used to be called conversion actions. So I still call it conversion actions. So don't get confused. It is synonymous. Um, and then to make things even more confusing, Google likes to use the term goal, which I think is actually like this whole section should probably be called conversion goals because they are goals. Um, uh, and so uh, it now has the word goal floating around sometimes too. Again, all synonymous. So um, setting up conversion actions is actually highly technical um, and I'm not going to go through that today. You're going to want to get someone who knows Google ads really well and knows how to use Google Tag Manager to do it right. Um, oftentimes what we see is um, uh, new clients will come to us and we can tell that someone set it up using the automatic settings from uh, Shopify or just tying it together with Google Analytics and letting all their uh, data pull in. And honestly, it's just not, um, it's just not ideal. Oftentimes uh, when you set it up the default way, uh, there's duplicate conversions happening. Um, or in the case of using Google Analytics to, to track, uh, it drops a lot of the conversion, uh, a lot of the users, um, because Google Analytics isn't as good as Google Ads um, uh, in tracking leads. So um, you're going to want to get someone who knows what they're doing, have them set it up using the um, uh, either Google Tag Manager or uh, the built-in Google uh, Ads conversion uh, tracker. I think that's what it's called. And um, I won't be going through that today because honestly, I just deal with strategy and managing the accounts. And I'm not, I'm not one of those highly technical folks that you're going to want to consult. All right. So um, what I do want to show you is the a couple of ways that you can manipulate um, how the algorithm thinks when it's deciding what to bid on. Um, and you would think that choosing your keywords or choosing the product titles um, and the ad copy are the only way to target, but it's not true. You can also use your goals to tell the algorithm, um, hey, I want you to go after this one um, conversion on my site, and I don't want you to go after these other ones. Um, and you can, you, can, you can make this distinction for the algorithm um, without sacrificing tracking all of those. And, and the way you would do that is you would use, well, there's a couple of ways, <laughs> bear with me. So one way is you can use this setting called primary versus secondary. Um, anything that's primary, if you hover over it, it says, it says primary actions are used for optimizing your bidding strategy. Um, what this means is anything that's set to primary, the amount of people that converted um, and any of the value that you're converting, if you're e-commerce and you're recording value with every conversion, is going to be included in the conversions column in the dashboard. And it means that the algorithm is going to be focusing on that and optimizing for it, which means any, anybody that you know, completes this conversion on your website is going to be looked at and scrutinized by the algorithm and they're gonna, it's gonna try to find more of those folks. Um, however, you can still have conversion goals that you're, that you're tracking and you wanna see the data for it, but you don't want it to, you don't want the algorithm to focus on that. Um, and that's called a secondary conversion action. Now, 
Okay, first of all, let me give you an example of why you might want this. Let's say you have a lead magnet on your website and you also have the ability for people to book um, meetings with you. And what you really want is for people to book meetings with you, but you're getting a ton of people just opting in for the lead magnet. Well, you might want to turn the lead magnet in goal into a secondary conversion. That way you can still see how many lead magnets um, uh, were received through uh, Google ad interactions, but you're not going to be telling the algorithm, hey, all these folks, these low quality converters that came through my lead magnet, I want you to, to optimize based off that. I only want you to optimize based on the people that booked a conversion with me. Um, now, I will say that it's a very common phenomenon when you're just getting started with Google ads. Um, there's no data in the account and the amount of people that are going to, for example, book a conversion with you, um, is far and few between in the beginning because the algorithm isn't optimized at all yet. And maybe you have a few other kinks to work out as well. So what we often do when we see an account that has no data in it and it has that example of what I gave you where there's a, a lead magnet, right? Just like a freebie opt-in on their website, getting let's say 20 leads a month and only one conversation booked a month, what we'll do is we will start out by having both conversion actions set to primary just temporarily so that the algorithm can start to at least optimize based off of the conversion data that's coming in, even though it's not the highest quality, it's the only data that's available. Then maybe after a month or two months or three months, depending on how frequently the conversions are happening, um, then we will switch the lead magnet over to secondary because we hope that the algorithm has enough to work off of with um, with the people that have booked conversions. This is just one example. I realize that some of you guys are also, uh, you know, another example would be if you have a, a lead, sorry, an e-commerce business and you sell things directly from your website, but it's also very common for someone who comes to your site to want to buy in bulk Right. And so there's like a, um, you know, wholesaler application form, that type of thing where it's not necessarily tracking conversion value. So uh, these are far and few between leads, but you still want to know how many you got from Google ads. Well, that's another great example. You might choose to only include the conversion value um, purchases on your website as a primary, and then you can have the wholesale form as a secondary conversion action. Now the secondary conversion actions, they're not going to show up in the conversions column. Where are they going to show up? They're going to show up in the all conversions column. Very, very, be very careful. You guys, let's, let's actually head over to the dashboard and I'll show you what I mean. There's two columns. One is called conversions. One is called all conversions. There we go. Conversions. I'm going to use conversion by conversion time because I really, um, I just want to see the conversions on the day that the conversion actually happened. And then there's all, all conversions. Is there an all conversions by conversion time? Yeah, there is. Shows you how often I look at all conversions. I only look at all conversions if I want to see one of those secondary conversion actions. And I would say as a, you know, as a consultant, I'm often not the person who wants to see that. It's usually the client or the end user or their team who wants to see that. Um, you would pull this column up. Here we go. All conversions versus conversions. And you can see, okay, there's six conversions, but there's actually 61 all conversions. And probably these are a lot of uh, duplicates because when we get um, an account that has existing conversion actions set up and we choose not to take over those conversion actions, but rather to build our own, which is the most common scenario, then what we'll do is we will take all the old conversion actions that exist and just change them to secondary. We don't want to delete or remove anything because we don't know who's making use of that information. However, once you have this column pulled up, you can um, just click segment by and then under conversions, click conversion action. See, oh, it's still called conversion action here. <laughs> I got to change that. And here it's going to break it down for you. So, you know, 20, so 30 of these was add to cart and five of these was purchase. You know, obviously we don't want to do add to carts as a, um, as a primary, but this is actually a great thing to track because it, it helps you track um, bounce rate. Basically, if a ton of people are adding things to the cart, 
but only six of them are converting well what can you do about that <laughs> i actually just did a recent video about whether your amazon store is causing high bounce rates it's called something like is amazon stealing your stealing your sales so uh, that's one common reason for a high bounce rate and this is a great way to track that all right um so We went through primary versus secondary conversion actions. Um, what there's there's one other way that you can manipulate the focus of the algorithm inside of Google Ads using conversion actions, and that's going to be inside of the campaign settings. So each campaign, if you go through here under settings, I'm just clicking on any old campaign, clicking on settings, it has this goals area. Okay, and if you open this up, you'll see you have the option. Do you want to use account goal settings or do you want to use campaign specific goal settings? What's the difference? Okay, so campaign, campaign specific goal settings lets you choose from the existing um, categories of campaign goals. Let's actually go back to the other screen and I'll show you what I mean. So here you have, you know, a category of goals called purchase goals. Um, you have one called add to cart goals, one called contact goals, etc. And so um, if you go over here, it's letting us choose. Um, actually, I don't know why we only have two options. Purchases website for conversion actions, contacts, calls from ads, purchases, contacts. What if we want add to cart? That is really odd. I don't know why we can't choose any of them. If we click on use account goal settings, it just defaults to um, any of the goal uh, conversion goal categories that are already set to the account level default goal categories. So if you go back to this screen, you'll see that, for example, this conversion section has account goal account default goal so does this one but then this one contact it doesn't have that and i believe there's a way to just edit that right here um. hi there quick interruption do you know the main thing that prevents small business owners from getting their google ads account into a position to grow and scale budget a lot of businesses, especially those that are just starting out, have limited budgets. And so because of this, they're turned away by most ad agencies because most ad agencies have minimum budget thresholds that they're willing to work with. So what happens is the business owners end up learning Google Ads themselves. And the problem with that is that most of the advice online is geared towards larger accounts. And the advice doesn't have any of those strategies or tricks that can kickstart the algorithm into giving a small account a leg up over larger competitors. So it often just doesn't work and the business just ends up losing money month over month. If this sounds familiar, Starter PPC can help. We offer Google Ads management services that are designed for accounts that have between $1,000 and $5,000 budgets. And because all of our clients are just starting out, we've come up with ways to keep our management fees significantly lower than most agencies. Because we know that every dollar saved on management fees just goes towards the ad budget, which is gonna help the algorithm gather speed and power. So if you're serious about growing your business and you'd like a team of Google Ads experts to help you without breaking the bank, check us out at starterppc.com. Okay, back to the video. Hmm. Yeah, these are, there we go. Yeah, you can change this. Um, so honestly, I would say more often than not, you're going to just want to use account goal settings um, and then you can manipulate which of the conversion categories are part of the account goal settings and then all your campaigns will just use the account goal settings nine times out of ten this is uh the case there are rare instances where it makes sense for one campaign to use its own conversion goals that are separate from the other campaigns. I would say it doesn't happen very often with small business. It's usually with larger corporations um, because sometimes like I've seen it happen where a corporation creates a landing page that tries to go after a, a new market of some sort. 
maybe wholesalers or whatever, and they don't want that campaign to report on um, the people that interact with the ads, go to that landing page, and then end up, you know, leaving the landing page and converting somewhere else. That's just data that doesn't make sense for the focus of that campaign. All they want to know is how did the landing page do at getting its goal at achieving its goal of getting the the form on that page submitted and so in that case you can do sort of a custom setup where you go into your conversion actions create a new category and that category of uh, uh will be specific to that campaign and you can just choose it um so yeah again that's that's more rare but that is another level of manipulating the focus of the algorithm using conversion actions that's mostly what I wanted to cover with you guys today. One last thought is, I just want you to know this because it tripped me up when I was first learning Google Ads. Any, camp any changes you make to your goal settings is are not retroactive, okay? That means if middle of the month you decide that you want to change a, a primary conversion action into a secondary conversion action, all of the conversions that came from that conversion action that you just changed in the past are going to remain in the conversions column reported as primary conversions up until that date. So depending on the date range that you're choosing here, you're going to see different data because you're now changing things in the settings. It's a mess. So you just want to try to make sure you set it up accurately the first time. And if you do change your mind and you want to change a setting, that's fine. Um, what I recommend is creating a note in the dashboard to, to mark the day that that happened. That way, if anybody is looking through the data, they can see um, exactly what day that happened. This is a pretty new account, so we just took over this account. So there's not a lot of data, but you can see here. We made a note, Starter PPC takes over management September 18th. That was just a few days ago. So... Um, you know, this type of note is great when you're making changes. Obviously that change is gonna show up in the change history, but it's nice to have the note here because when people are digging through the dashboard, trying to find the data they need, they can see the change, the, the, the reason why, you know, the cost per conversion went skyrocketed up. Well, that's because you cut out half of the conversions from the conversions column using the settings. All right, I hope that made sense. Um, thank you for watching. I hope this has been helpful crash course on uh, some really cool settings in the conversion actions area that's available to you. Um, your setup is going to be specific to you. There's no right or wrong way to go about it unless you're setting it up in a way that doesn't match your own personal goals for your own business. All right. Thanks for watching. If your agency is asking you what your ROAS goal should be, you have the wrong agency. What I mean by that is ROAS is a fairly poor way of measuring the campaign success. It doesn't tell you if it's brand traffic, non-brand, cold, warm, new, repeat, referral, omni-channel. It doesn't tell you anything but that I spent money and something happened, which seems like a good idea, but 